Hello everybody, Hahano here, bringing you this time, Cho'Gath in the jungle. Now this game I'll have Lee Sin against me. The other team has a laning Warwick, laning Fiddlesticks, and a laning Olaf. So their team is four junglers. That's pretty fine with me. Our top is Trindamir. We're going to have Graves in the middle, and we're actually going to send Zareth and Teemo bottom. Uh, Graves picked middle, but that's what it is. So looking at Cho'Gath, he's really good because his feast is always great. It's amazing for counter jungling, it's amazing for regular jungling, it's amazing for ganks. It's just an extremely strong skill. And no other champion really brings that much true damage to the table. He also has two forms of CC, which give him some excellent poking, and also a lot of utility in a team fight. It's hard to kill someone that Cho'Gath is protecting, because when you come at them, you get knocked up, then you're slowed, then you're silenced, then you lose all of your life. So Cho'Gath is pretty rude, um, and he's extremely strong pick. I don't think he's the best jungler because his ganks aren't as strong as some others, but they're also a lot better than most of the cast. So overall, I would say he's one of the top 10 junglers, and I would recommend playing him. It's really strong, especially if your team needs a tank, him and Skarner, Ramus, Maokai. The thing he brings to the table that Skarner, Ramus, and Maokai don't is a lot of utility to the late game fight on top of a body. The other guys have a really early ganks and strong laning presence in the early game, but Cho'Gath actually gets stronger as the game progresses. So while he can early gank at around level 2 or level 3, he's actually stronger later on when he can use all of his spells disruptively. So you have to do a dance here if you notice with Cho'Gath that makes him better. I don't know why, but it does. I'm starting with Q. Typically I start with E. But I was um, trying different things this game. Q ended up working out. I think I'll probably still start E unless I really need that level 2 gank. But I doubt I would ever. And you could go Q, W for your level 2. But I think E is a much safer and sustained. You see I already have no mana. It won't matter once I pick up blue, but if someone had counter jungled my blue if counter jungled my blue if someone had come in right now then I would have been in a bad spot so E is a lot better for that it's also good for clearing camps because you don't have to spend mana to do damage it's extremely strong ability and makes him able to jungle really well and sometimes hurts him in the lane so that's a that's an advantage of the E skill the vorpal spikes so on Cho'Gath, I don't really have a set route. I typically go Wolves Blue, Wraiths Golems Red on any of my junglers. Cho'Gath's able to do this just fine. He's extremely sustained due to his passive. Whenever he kills an enemy, he gains 36 health and 3.75 mana. And I actually think that scales later once he levels more, but he basically gets health and mana back every time he kills something, so he doesn't need life leech, and with something like a regrowth pendant, he never really runs out of, ma of life, because it regrows so fast. And his skills with blue buff are extremely low cooldown for a jung uh, AoE jungler. And he has three AoE spells, so his jungle speed is actually really quick. Now, right here I'm level 3, clocking in around 317. I don't really know the numbers for anyone else, but I'm up just about ahead of, of most other people. And a lot of other junglers would have to recall here as well. And Cho'Gath can take down red. I actually don't think I recall for quite a while. He's extremely sustained because of his passive, which is great. So here I took a second point in Vorpal Spikes because I see that Teemo is beating Fiddlesticks on top. He's actually going to get first blood right here. Bottom is doing fine. I'm actually in voice chat with Trindamir on bottom. And I want them to be that pushed up. Uh, they can wait until now, level 4, for me to come and gank. And Graves is doing well against Warwick. He's not losing. Uh, Warwick is keeping up against CS, which is great, but he's not. It, Graves is full life and no threat of dying. Warwick is really hard to push out of the lane. He's also really hard to gank because he just can Q you and gain a whole bunch of life back. So overall, I, tr I don't gank Cho'Gath or uh, Warwick often. So here I noticed that 
bottom lane is still pushed up. I ping them to to go in and gank. So I get in there, I land a rupture on on no one because I suck, and then um, I silence. I'm just really providing a body. Timo goes up and around for Trindamir, but I hit him with a rupture here. He flashes out of the bush to try and juke. Um, I end up flashing after him and getting him with a Q. Uh, or hit him with a Q and Trindamir finishes the kill. Here I just hit Olaf with the Q and again Trindamir cleans up that kill. So I scream at the, the minions there because I was pretty angry at them. So Cho'Goth's ganks are pretty good once they're an extended duration. And also if they have any CC in their in their lane, it's extremely good. Like if you're if you have a Scion in mid and he stuns and then you land rupture silence, it, it it's really hard not to kill someone. So if there is hard CC, his ganks are ridiculous. If there isn't hard CC, like you just saw, because Zareth didn't land a stun. Uh, I can really just keep people from getting at Trindamir. So Trindamir was really baiting both Trin both Timo and um, the other guy. I forget him already. He was baiting him up, Olaf, baiting at because he was low life. But every time they got near him, they got ruptured or silenced. So since Fiddlesticks is having a really hard time on top, he actually switches with Timo. Um, and our Teemo goes from getting first blood to uh, not doing so well this game. And the problem with that lane on top, and you'll see this in a few of your games, is it's, a, it's what I like to call a volatile lane, in which things go from fine to bad extremely quickly. Uh, especially with Teemo, if any of you have played him, you know that once your opponent hits a mushroom, you pretty much just walk in to score the kill. It's extremely easy from there on. So you'll see a lot of stuff where Teemo is, you know, mid life, three quarters life, and then all of a sudden they hit a mushroom, come in, finish the job. So here I'm going to go on Warwick in the middle. Uh, I notice he has his ultimate, so we're thinking he's going to jump on Graves. He doesn't end up doing that. I miss another Q here. Um, Graves wastes his flash. I don't know why he did, but so did Warwick. So overall, it was successful, but if I had not been bad and landed the Q, I would have been fine. I actually don't play too much Cho'Goth. I prefer the tanky initiators like Starner and Ramus, but Cho'Goth is still really good, um, even though I'm not that great at him. This game, I end up doing very well. He's just an extremely good poker and huge body. You can get all of your fee stacks up in the jungle and it's great. So here we just got a brief glimpse of Lee Sin in mid. He is level 6 with cloth armor which means that I'm only a quarter of a level behind him and I've already ganked three times at this point. I've ganked top once, I've ganked bottom once, and I've ganked middle once. So as far as sustain, speed, and farm, I'm doing better than Lee Sin this game because he took cloth in five and didn't even leave the jungle and he's only a quarter of a level ahead of me. Even if he were a full level ahead of me, I, I haven't been in the jungle the whole time. So that's one of the pros of uh, Mr. Cho'Goth. So again, our lanes are fairly, fairly quiet. Um, top lane, as I said, is really volatile. I keep checking up on them, but they're usually at around half health each, and then whoever lands the first blind ends up killing the other one, or whoever hits a mushroom. So there's really not much I can do. You'll see me go up there a few times, but typically our top lane Teemo died much too fast for me to do anything. So I'm continuing farming. Warwick is just pushing in middle. He can't really push that hard. Uh, and even if he has a Wriggles, he pushes okay. He still doesn't have any AoE. So I don't go there. So here I see that Lee Sin is ganking top. So I immediately go. I'm on my way over there. Timo, like I said, he goes down. He hit a mushroom on the way out. They didn't follow him. I go in to try and pick up the kill, but I miss more Qs. Tip when you're playing Cho'Goth, don't suck um, and learn how to hit your cues more often. It's a pretty hard skill to hit and you have to predict where people are going to be going. 
but with a lot of practice you can really do it uh, fairly consistently. So I noticed that Teemo doesn't have teleport, he's not here, so I'm his, his teleport's down, he does have teleport. So I'm just taking some of this farm so that when he gets back it'll be at the tower. And I didn't want Lee Sin pushing it to the tower either. So I'm returning to my jungle. I have Smite and Feast, which makes him even faster than almost anyone with that. It's you know, 1800 damage, 1600 damage right away. So you see this guy just gets Smite and eaten. You know, that was probably the, one of the fastest red buffs you've seen in 10 minutes by anybody. So that's one of the strengths of Cho as well. And I'll keep reiterating it because it's it's true. No other jungler can really bring three AoE spells and two smites into the jungle. It, it's not even close. So there's Fiddlesticks dying again on bottom. Our Teemos are in a battle up top. Graves is still doing fine against Warwick in middle. Warwick really... He has an extremely good burst damage combo and he's extremely sustained he's able to chip you down and then jump on you and ignite and you die but this game Graves is giving a lot of trouble I think he was expecting an AP but he instead got Graves who's able to just kite his Q's all day so I'm here to help top mostly just to scare him off my whole side of the jungle is clear I'm ready to recall anyway so I'm just here offering moral support um, but Timo decides to go on him Almost dies again here. Um, we almost picked up their Teemo as well, but it didn't matter. So I noticed that their Teemo has to go back now. Their jungler is nowhere to be seen. Our Teemo is going back, so I'm pushing this lane. I'm going to try and get it up to the tower, get a few hits on it. And you should do this whenever you have the opportunity. So I get a few hits, I notice a teleport, I leave immediately, throw a rupture behind me just in case he decides to chase. So that's that. Bottom lane is still doing just fine. Um, like I said, I'm on voice chat, so I may not be checking down there often, but I'm getting constant feedback on what's going on from my bottom laners. And I really, that's one thing you should l really look to have at least one friend on either top or bottom, at least one lane, so that you know for a fact that one lane isn't going to fail, and if they are failing, then you're going to know about it immediately. So I'm just continuing to farm. You notice my mana is getting a little low, but that's really not much of an issue. I'm also using a lot of mana because I know I'm going to recall pretty soon if I have to or if I need to. So I'm just using my W freely. I could just use one W and E and be fine at the camp, but I've been doing QW. Uh, I notice there's some scuffle going on on bottom, so I'm heading down there just in case things get, you know, out of hand. I notice that Olaf is really going crazy here, trying to pick up these kills. So I come in, and this is part of that one lane rule I always harp on. Um, if I hadn't have been there, he might have either scored a double or we wouldn't have picked up a kill. So it's a really good thing that I went there, even though I could have used the recall at that point in time. I could have used this or that. We picked up a kill and um, potentially could have gotten a tower if Lee Sidden hadn't shown up there and Zareth hadn't recalled. So I noticed Lee Sin. I ping for him. I tell Graves is also on voice chat with me. I tell him that Lee Sin's coming from from bottom. And this is one thing you should do to avoid ganks that's important. You see how far up Graves is right now? And he's also saving his dash. He could try to bait Lee Sin out, but he never knows what's going to happen. Warwick can jump on him and Lee Sin can actually cover a lot of ground really quickly. So if you see how far back he is against this wall, that's really critical if you see a gank that's coming because it's going to help you not get killed which is, of course, a good thing. So you want to stick back like that. Lee Sin is now in the middle, so he graves has him a little more wiggle room. As long as he stays away from Warwick's range, he's going to be fine. Uh, Warwick's flash is down from one of the previous scuffles. So he's doing fine there. Teemo and Teemo are still 
punching each other in the face up here on top lane, running after each other. It's just, mirror matches are always kind of silly, but some characters are worse. And I think Timo Timo is pretty bad because it's he who lands the blind and the mushroom. So bottom lane is gonna go ahead and take this tower right now. Oh no, they're not. Okay. So Fit ults in, but they got out. I think Fiddle would have been best to go around another way in ultimate, but he chose not to. So Graves is coming down to support this. Uh, let's see if we can dive these two at the tower. We know Fiddle's ultimate's down. I have a silence for his ultimate, so we're just trying to take this tower. So instead, since middle is missing, uh, had to go back. And since bottom had to go back, we're going to end up taking Dragon. And you notice how I pull it out like this. Lee Sin is able to teleport, kick in, and smite and get out. So you want to pull it out as far as you can when you're on top side. They come to contest this Dragon, but really Fiddlesticks is far behind. Lee Sin is pretty far behind, and um, Warwick really isn't equipped to deal with us. So we get in there, we pick up the kills. I actually land a rupture for once in my life. Um, we take down Warwick. Uh, Tridemir has to get out. And here I ask Graves to stay. If you notice, we killed Warwick, so mid lane's not there. He starts to go top, and I said, no, come, take this tower. And this is something you should be doing when you play. If you notice, there's only Olaf here. The other bottom laner's dead, jungler's dead, mid is dead. We can take this tower for free, and then he can go back with no threat to his tower right now, because it's not being pushed. So we pick up that turret, and now we're all dispersing back to our, our regular routine. Um, Tridemir and I decide to go take their red. So he starts the red. I walk in, and I want to give Tridemir red. So I walk, I come up, I feast it so he can get it with like 100 life left. Lee Sin tries to take his red buff, but we end up getting him out of there, flushing him out. And here we pull out before anything bad happens. Warwick uh, has his w his blood scent going on Trindamir right now, and Olaf was still on bottom. So we got out before we got surrounded. So we toss down another ward. Another thing I do a lot. I don't know other people, but I leave sight wards in my inventory when I don't have a wriggles. Again, something I'm working on. I typically get lost in the heat of the moment and want to put that ward in the best possible spot, so and then I just forget to. So don't do that either. These videos are full of things not to do. Here I'm stealing Grace's farm. I'm doing it as a joke. I'm actually uh, yelling at him and team speak about it. Uh, you shouldn't do that, but I thought it was really funny at the time getting up my feast stacks. I noticed that Zareth is holding top, but Zareth has infinite range, so he can just stand like at the summoner platform and hit them. Um, I noticed that mid had come up, our mid's coming up. Fiddle's here, so there's going to be a fight. Uh, our Teemo teleports in. Now right here, this is a mistake a lot of people would typically make. Our Teemo got hit with a mushroom, and he continues to run in. I tell everyone to pull back because we don't know where all of them are. That could have potentially been a 4v5 with Teemo slowed and blinded. So you don't want to engage on something like that because it's just bad. So and here I'm giving Graves my red buff. Um, we're playing a lot more passively and I think it's really rewarding us because we're getting... We're not dying as much. Teemo is the only one playing aggressively, and of course he's not on voice chat with us. So Warwick gets jumps on Teemo. I do a flash, flash smite or flash, yeah, smite Warwick. That's a good one. Flash feast, which is really strong to a gank if you can flash feast. Um, you don't have to waste flash. I didn't want him to get away. That was probably a waste of flash, but I got a kill, so I feel good about myself. And here we're just poking at the tower, trying to get as much damage as we can. If Fiddle goes on to us, he's going to die. Um, Olaf's here, so we pull off. Teemo's also coming down, so we get out. So, 
continuing on, I go to take blue buff. Now, not every game you're going to get blue buff like this. I could technically be giving it to Zareth, but Zareth is not doing so great in CS. He's playing like a supportish Zareth. He is Cage's lucky pick. He doesn't have much AP. He's also top lane right now. So I'm just going to pick these up for myself. I've been taking the blues because Graves didn't want them. It's not that they're bad on Graves, but blue on me means I can jungle forever. Um, blue on him means he can harass me, so it's, it's not as critical. Especially when he has me able to gank all the time. So our bottom lane's returning. Uh, Teemo's actually going bottom now for Olaf. Mids back to the, the daily grind there. Zareth just took top because no one came at him. And, you know, all of these things are good. We're st we're moderately ahead. I wouldn't say that we're um, immeasurably far ahead. We can still definitely lose this game. If they land a good uh, Warwick ultimate on Graves or Trindamir, they're dead. Um, Teemo's going to die pretty quickly. So overall... We're, this game is still definitely losable. So, and for my item progression, which I just spent time getting, I look at their team comp, I notice that Warwick is going CDR, so it's, you know, semi-magic damage. Teemo is a P AD, or hybrid technically, but he's building AD with, with his wriggles and, and all the other stuff. So, and... Olaf is true damage, so I just need life, which my feast gives me, and armor, and Lee Sin is damage, so I don't actually buy any magic resistance aside from Aegis this game, because I don't need any of it. You know, Frozen Heart, Ninja Tabai, it all, it's enough armor to prevent, especially since Fiddlesticks is um, not doing well. He's 0-5, he has a blasting wand, so he doesn't even have Rod of Ages yet. Overall, the threat to my AP to my magic resistance is negligible. It's not there. So I don't even bother building it. Now, later game, if Fiddle has been getting fed or whatever else, that might change. But for now, it's, it's not going to. So we're just pressuring this middle tower again. We have a lot of damage right now. They don't necessarily. I'm able to take a lot of these tower hits due to my life and armor. So we get in, we harass them a little bit. Zareth using his infinite range hacks. Um, Trindamir decides to take this mushroom on purpose and then doesn't realize how much it actually does as it nearly kills him. And again, this is something you'll see in a lot of games where you kind of just sit poking. We're really posturing to take this tower and trying to catch them out of position. And they're trying to catch us out of position in order to, to kill all of us. Because they're near their tower, so... Here, if we were to engage on their tower, we would probably wipe. Um, but for now, we're using Cho'Goth with blue buff powers to just constantly rupture, constantly silence, constantly do everything. He's just CC disruption machine. So here someone swings around, but nothing really comes of it. We have pretty good response time on that. Olaf gets stunned. And again, all of this is good only because our top lane is pushing, if you notice over here, and our bottom lane is doing fine. None of our towers are in limbo right now. We don't have any other objectives aside from Dragon. So what we're doing there wasn't wasting our time, we were just biding our time until we were able to pick up that tower. And now we get the tower, we get dragon, they got nothing, and they have to go and defend their top tower, and we have a wave to push bottom if we choose. So overall that was really good, and really situationally dependent. There's a lot of time where things like that happen that aren't worth it because your towers are getting hammered or whatever reason, but in that particular instance I called for everyone to keep staying in the middle, keep pushing, keep pressuring that tower, and it paid off eventually. So, back to farming. As per usual, um, as a jungler, you always want to eventually get back into to picking up your farm. I'm letting Trindamir and Graves pick up my red, because while it's decent on any character, it's best on Trindamir and Graves, because 
they have characters that they want to slow and, and keep slowed to kill them. So, and we're just taking care of, you know, dotting our I's, crossing our T's here, pushing our lanes out, clearing our jungle out, doing all the, the stuff to gear up for a Baron or another push. Because at this point in the game, we can do those things as a team. We're far enough ahead that we're setting the pace. So we're trying not to get caught out of position, unlike Teemo. Um, Trindamir gets a little caught, but he's able to just spin away. There's no, no harm done. Graves, I think, is a recalling on top. Teemo, for whatever reason, keeps going in on bottom. He knows there's more than one person there, so he's going to drop here. Uh, which... These, th that's one of the little things that can lose you a game. Because he just gave the other team a lot of gold. He gave Olaf kill gold for killing him. He gave every three people down there gold on the assist. So, and he gets mad at Fiddlesticks, even though he shouldn't have been there in the first place for Fiddlesticks to even help kill him. So I'm picking up my blue again. Again, I could have given it to Zareth, but... I just wanted to have it. I, I like blue a lot. And I'm not doing bad. I'm at 106 right now, so... Overall, I'm worthy to have blue. I'm not like a 06 fiddlesticks right now. I'm doing good things with the blue. I'm jungling forever. I'm getting a lot of farm. If you notice, I'm 13. The highest on our team is 14. That's pretty uncommon for a jungler, uh, but Cho is really sustained really sustained so he's able to just push lanes do the jungle steal the buffs do everything and just lose almost no resources i don't think i've been below full health this whole time in the jungle it's pretty crazy so i go back finish up my frozen heart i pick up an oracles it might have been a little late for an oracles but i was really trying to maximize my early game tankiness i don't like to I typically don't like to throw away early advantage gold on items like oracles because it's one of the items that you need to be able to live through in order to use properly. So if you were to pick up an early oracles with that and then die, you've lost all of your advantage, all of it, right there. Whereas if I pick up an Aegis early, I'm maintaining that advantage throughout the game for me and my team. And I didn't really look up an item guide. I typically don't look up item guides or um, path for junglers. I kind of just do my own thing. It helps keep me unpredictable in the jungle. And I'm keeping timer on dragon on, uh, on my phone. So I'm... Um, Knowing the dragon's coming up around 29, we just picked it up again to around 23. So, again, we're just doing the clerical kind of stuff here. Pushing lanes and then pressuring somewhere on the map because our lanes are pushed. So, Zerus recalling, picking up his Rod of Ages. And we're going to take this as an opportunity to just... Uh, I'm going to take this as an opportunity to poke the other team. Um, like I said before, Chogas pokes are really good. You know, I'm doing a couple hundred damage to these guys every four to six seconds. If it hits them, if it doesn't hit them, it's no big deal. It's up again by the time we need them for a fight. I'm just trying to harass them and keep them from doing anything before Zareth gets here. And once Zareth gets here, he's going to actually throw down his ultimate as a pretty good initiate. We're going to wait for this wave to come in, and then we're going to go in on him. Again, this is the same thing that happened at mid-tower last time. Each side is waiting for the other to start a fight. Warwick actually walks in and gets silenced right away. I feast him. He drops. Fiddlesticks comes in, but he's so underdeveloped that no one cares. The other people drop. I somehow picked up uh, two kills and all of that. I pick up another kill. Knock Teemo up. Silence Lee Sin here. And, and that right there is the power of, of Cho'Gath. Every time they went in to take down one of our teammates, they were knocked up, they were silenced, they were whatever else. So overall, Cho'Gath is an extremely sustainable jungle tank with a ton of team presence and an excellent character to play.
Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Victory!